What's up guys, JJ Gills here, and today we're going to talk about breeding African cichlids, specifically peacock cichlids. So stay tuned, I'm going to go through step by step with everything you need to know from beginning to end. So welcome back to the channel guys, and if you're new, my name's JJ, I'm a licensed breeder and aquaculture dealer, and I've been breeding cichlids for a while now. So a while back I did a setup video where we set up a 40 gallon breeder for some peacock cichlids and we've had some results so I want to talk about the process from beginning to end. Now this isn't a care guide, we're not going to go through all of the parameters and all that, I just want to tell you exactly what you need to know to breed peacock cichlids. So let's get started. First thing you need to know is how to sex them, how to tell a male from a female and with peacocks it's pretty easy. So the two things you're going to look for is when they're of mature age, the males will start to color up and they'll be a little bigger, more colorful, and have longer fins, while the females will stay mostly gray and you won't get like long flowy or pointy fins. And it's pretty simple. But basically, if it's really colorful, it's for sure a male. And if it's flat out gray, probably female. And then with your ratio, if you're trying to get a breeding group together, you wanna to have one male for about three to four females would be ideal. Okay, next let's talk about selecting your fish for your breeding group, things that you wanna look for. Uh, in a male, you wanna look for size, color, and aggression. And that's the reason we set up this tank originally, was because I had a German red peacock male that was starting to kinda look like the tank boss. He was chasing everybody all over. I said, oh, I know what that guy's about. Let's get a breeding tank set up and see if we can have some success with it. And as far as females go, um, the heavier the better. If you can get your females thick and nice and healthy, then those are going to be great and they're going to be ready to lay some eggs for you. Uh, now let's talk about tank setup. For most peacock breeding setups, if you're just doing like one breeding group, a 40 breeder, 40 gallon tank is fine. Have your male and a few females in there and you should be good to go. Now sometimes in a breeding tank I'll leave it bare bottom because it's easier to clean and a few other reasons. But for peacocks I definitely want to put some sand or fine gravel substrate down because I find they kind of burrow into it and scoop out a bed area. So you can see here that he's kind of dug that gravel out and he's making a bed behind a sponge filter. So we definitely want to make sure we have some substrate and then some caves just in case somebody needs a a break or needs to hide from some of the aggression in the tank. Okay, next let's talk about conditioning your fish, getting them ready to spawn for you. And basically you just want to feed them good food. You want to get them good and thick and healthy. Now you don't have to break the bank with food. You can do pellets, but you might want to mix it up with some blood worms, brine shrimp, maybe even some mealworms, stuff to get some protein on your fish so they're ready to lay. And as far as triggering a spawn goes, um, a lot of people will try to keep their temperatures in the low to mid 80s, like 82, 84. And then they'll do water changes often, which serves two purposes. One, when you cool that temperature down and it goes back up, it sort of imitates the rainy season, which is good for South American and African cichlids. And then the other thing is when you're feeding, you're power feeding these fish a few times a day, you're going to have trouble with your water parameters if you're not really on top of your water changes. All right, so we've got our fish set up in the tank. We've been conditioning them. We've been feeding them, getting them ready. Let's talk about how they do it. So their process, uh, peacock cichlids are our mouth brooding cichlid, which means the female's gonna lay the egg and then the male's gonna come around and fertilize it and then the female's gonna pick it back up in her mouth. But yeah, that's it. Basically, they're gonna swirl around and it's, it actually is like a really cool dance. They sort of look like a yin and yang swirling around and it's drop the egg, fertilize the egg, pick the egg back up over and over and hopefully I can find some footage of that for you guys. Now, after the female lays her eggs and she's holding them in her mouth and if you miss it, you'll know during feeding time because she won't be going up to eat because her mouth is full of her eggs. And if you look real close, you'll see that she's sort of puffed out under the jaw and maybe even out into the gills. And she'll hold those eggs for about three weeks. I've had them go as long as a month. If they are still holding eggs in a month, I usually strip them. But in my experience, and especially if you're not very experienced, don't strip the fry. It causes more stress and more problems than it's worth. The mothers usually do a pretty good job. 
So we've gotten the fish to spawn. We've hatched the eggs. Now what do we do with the babies? And it's pretty simple. Just the same parameters that you'd keep your adults in. And you want to just feed them good food. Keep your water clean. So things that I can feed, you can do crushed up flakes or pellets. Or I've been doing more baby brine shrimp lately. But yeah, you just want to have, give them a good diet. And they do need access to food multiple times a day still. Because they're growing fish. They need that protein and that energy. And that's basically it from beginning to end, guys. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget that like button and subscribe for more content. And I'll see you in the next one.